but for so I was talking to one of the most successful men in the state of California yesterday at our cigar lounge. Okay. And I he was just talking about um he's a farmer and he was talking about what we did and somehow we started talking about barley. And we no figs. He said, "Yeah, the, so the fi- the biggest fig grower just kind of went out of business and I think we're going to go into the fig business." And I was like, so what are you going to, what did you, how did that guy go out of business, number one? Mm-hmm. I was like, right. uh, and why would you want to go into it? And I was like, why would you want to go into it? And then yeah. how are you like, how are you going to capitalize and how did you learn from it? And then from there, it kind of went into like, oh yeah. And I was like, what, like so what do you do? He's like, bro, I'm always experimenting on things. I'm always, always experimenting on things. But he's like, at a point in time I had, we were growing a lot of different, he called them stone fruits. And every two weeks, it would be a different stone fruit that would be in season that people would be demanding, like, hey, no, it's this one now, it's this one now, it's this one now. And he, and if you take that, whatever, two times, 50, 52 weeks in a year, right? Yeah. 52. Right. So, like, it's a lot of, and for every different fruit, there was a lot of different chemicals, processing machines, and knowledge that had to go into that. Mm-hmm. He was like, at a point in time, I eliminated all of them. And I only started growing four different things. I grow almonds, pistachios, and mandarins. And grapes. So, because you, you probably only had a general knowledge of of the farming at that point, right? A, more of a general knowledge because you're doing so much of it, you don't have a chance to have a specialized knowledge in that fruit. So right. So they perfected those four things, and this goes into all those young entrepreneurs who are hopping from one thing to another to another to another. Like, oh, I'm doing drop shipping. Oh, now I'm doing wholesaling. Oh, now I'm doing this. Now I'm flipping couches. To where, like, bro, focus. And if we can take this to your real estate marketing. Uh-huh. If you just focus on your <clears throat> niche lists at the beginning and hammer them down until you get a hold of everybody, they all say no. And then even I'd ask them, like, you can still market to them in three months. They're not even going to know. And then keep on going. But if you don't niche down at the beginning and focus that time and energy, it's never going to be successful, right? Like the people who are starting off and they have five different markets yeah, and they have one cold caller and they're calling high equity lists. I was like, bro, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Like your ad spend's not going really anywhere and you're spreading out that person in different places. Might as well go deeper, not wider, mm-hmm. and hammer down on a market and then niche really, really far down and focus on that. And yeah. then we could take the focus and the nicheness and the con- then we still got consistency, right? Of all those things together in one market, that's how you're going to be successful. You're not going to be successful. Oh, I'm nationwide and I have one cold caller and we're in four different cities. Like, First and foremost, you don't you're need not the nationwide. ego You're not fucking nationwide with one, with one, you know what I mean? <laughs> with one, <laughs> with one cold caller. So, right? so, you know what I mean? So that tells you a lot about their experience right then and there. Just like that, that was a silly statement. Right. Someone was to make that statement, right? Um, t- kind of tying into what you're saying um, with niching down and stuff like that. So we talked about how, um, you know, we're using PropStream, right? With, with data, you can pull 10,000 records a month. Right. And so if I took those 10,000 records and I went ahead and skip traced them all at that point in time, depending on how much, you know, you pay per skip, that could be a great deal of money if you're talking about every month. Right. Oh, yeah. And so being able to niche down or or, or really stack data and and pull niches and start calling niches instead of just calling absentee, calling um, a vacant or, you know, tax liens, whatever that may be. Instead of doing that, when you pull those 10,000 records by stacking those lists with other records, now you have more motivation on these lists, right? Because they're niche lists at that point. And maybe of the 10,000 records for that list that I have, maybe only 100 of them or 150 of them aren't skipped. So then we'll just skip those 150 records instead of skipping 10,000 records because I would have blindly been skipping 10,000 records and then just calling that list. No, we shrank it down and we focused in on one niche. We saved money because we didn't have to skip trace the whole ten thousand, and now we're calling a, a more uh, uh, a list that's more precise, a list that should have multiple motivations, and we're going to get more, you know, deals out of that. 